Good day and God bless you. Welcome to the Bible reading in chronological order. It's just such a privilege to have you with us. We thank the Lord for each of you. Thank you for joining us and for participating with us in the venture to complete the Bible in a single year. We're just so grateful to the Lord that we have the opportunity to go through this and just to gather some context and some brief understanding of the passage before we read through the word of the Lord. Today we're busy in the book of Ezekiel again, and we're going to be going through chapters 5, 6, 7, and 8. So when we look at chapters 5, 6, and 7, these go as a set because it is the prophecies of the prophet Ezekiel against the house of Israel for the things that the house of Israel had done. But let's look at it. First of all, in chapter 5, we see that the Lord tells Ezekiel to shave off his head and beard and to weigh and divide the shavings into three measures. One third has to be burned in the midst of the city, one third is to be smitten with a knife, and one third is to be scattered in the wind. A few is to be tied to his skirt as well. And Ezekiel was here acting out what God was going to do with Israel because of their abominations. God's judgment was that a third of the people shall die of the pestilence and famine, a third of the people shall die by the sword, and a third shall be scattered and persecuted with the sword. And then in chapter 6, Ezekiel is told to prophesy against the mountains and the rivers and the valleys of Israel. There will be a destruction of the land, and the high places will be destroyed. This is where the people had the images and did all of their idol worship and all of these things. Now, instead of the incense, there will be the stink of men's carcasses and bones. In all of this, God will spare a remnant, and they will be scattered among all nations, and they will remember the Lord. And then we get to chapter 7, and the Lord tells Ezekiel that the end of the land of Israel is come. The Lord will recompense their ways back to them and not have pity because of their abominations. Both the buyer and the seller shall lose because of the destruction. The wealth will be plundered. The people within the city shall die with the pestilence and the famine. And they that are in the field will die with the sword. They that escape to the mountain shall mourn. They shall be feeble and weak and gird themselves with sackcloth and be ashamed. Their silver and their gold will not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. The land shall be plundered by robbers. Then they shall know the Lord. And when you look at this, look at this in a prophetic sense as well. Because a lot of the imagery that is used is prophetic to even in our day. And so what is that talking about? So just be aware and just take that into consideration as you go through these passages. We then get to chapter 8, and in this chapter we read of Ezekiel's vision of jealousy and the chambers of imagery. Now in this vision, the prophet is told to dig a hole in the wall through which he sees a door. And when he went through it, he saw the most abominable things. And the Lord showed him that this is what the ancients, the religious leaders of the house of Israel, do because they think they do these things in secret. And so we read of the Lord's wrath against idolatry and for idolatry and this is this is very painful when you read through it and you think how far Israel had fallen but we see that even the ancients were busy with these idolatrous practices and the worshiping of false gods and the doing things in secret because they don't believe that the Lord is watching them and the Lord is now bringing judgment to those that have forsaken him that have that have not relied and put their trust in the Lord. This is where we're going to leave it for today. I pray that the Lord would bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you. May He give you peace. God bless you as you enjoy the reading of the Word today. Chapter 5 And thou, son of man, take thee a sharp knife, take thee a barber's razor, and cause it to pass upon thine head and upon thy beard. Then take thee balances to weigh and divide the hair. Thou shalt burn with fire a third part in the midst of the city when the days of the siege are fulfilled. And thou shalt take a third part and smite about it with a knife. And a third part thou shalt scatter in the wind. And I will draw out a sword after them. Thou shalt also take thereof a few in number and bind them in thy skirts. Then take up them again 
and cast them into the midst of the fire, and burn them in the fire. For thereof shall a fire come forth into all the house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord God, This is Jerusalem. I have set it in the midst of the nations and countries that are round about her. And she hath changed my judgments into wickedness more than the nations, and my statutes more than the countries that are round about her. For they have refused my judgments and my statutes. They have not walked in. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, because ye multiplied more than the nations that are round about you, and have not walked in my statutes, neither have kept my judgments, neither have done according to the judgments of the nations that are round about you. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, am against thee, and will execute judgment in the midst of thee in the sight of the nations. And I will do in thee that which I have not done, and whereunto I will not do any more the like, because of all thine abomination. Therefore, the fathers shall eat the sons in the midst of thee, and the sons shall eat their fathers. And I will execute judgments in thee, and the whole remnant of thee will I scatter into all the winds. Wherefore, as I live, said the Lord God, surely because thou hast defiled my sanctuary with all thy detestable things and with all thine abominations, therefore will I also diminish thee. Neither shall mine eyes spare neither will I have any pity. A third part of thee shall die with the pestilence, and with the famine shall they be consumed in the midst of thee. And a third part shall fall by the sword round about thee. And I will scatter a third part into all the winds, and I will draw out a sword after them. Thus shall mine anger be accomplished, and I will cause my fury to rest upon them, and I will be comforted. And they shall know that I, the Lord, have spoken it in my zeal when I have accomplished my fury in them. Moreover, I will make thee waste and a reproach among the nations that are round about thee in the sight of all that pass by. So it shall be a reproach and a taunt, an instruction and an astonishment unto the nations that are round about thee when I shall execute judgments in thee in anger and in fury and in furious rebukes. I, the Lord, have spoken it. When I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for their destruction, and which I will send to destroy you. And I will increase the famine upon you, and will break your staff of bread. So will I send upon you famine and evil beasts, and they shall bereave thee. And pestilence and blood shall pass through thee, and I will bring the sword upon thee. I, the Lord, have spoken it. Chapter 6 And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, set thy face toward the mountains of Israel, and prophesy against them, and say, Ye mountains of Israel, hear the word of the Lord God. Thus saith the Lord God to the mountains, and to the hills, to the rivers, and to the valleys. Behold, I, even I, will bring a sword upon you, and I will destroy your high places. And your altar shall be desolate, and your images shall be broken. And I will cast down your slain men before your idols, and I will lay the dead carcasses of the children of Israel before their idols, and I will scatter your bones round about your altars. In all your dwelling places, the cities shall be laid waste, and the high places shall be desolate, that your altars may be laid waste and made desolate, and your idols may be broken and cease, and your images may be cut down, and your works may be abolished. The slain shall fall in the midst of you, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Yet will I leave a remnant, that ye may have some that shall escape the sword among the nations, when ye shall be scattered through the country. And they that escape of you shall remember me among the nations whither they shall be carried captives, because I am broken with their whorish heart, which hath departed from me, and with their eyes, which go a-whoring after their idols, and they shall loathe themselves for the evils which they have committed in all their abominations. And they shall know that I am the Lord, and that I have not said in vain that I would do this evil unto them. Thus saith the Lord God, Smite with thine hand, and stamp with thy foot, and say, Alas for all the evil abominations of the house of Israel, for they shall fall by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence. He that is far off shall die of the pestilence, 
and he that is near shall fall by the sword, and he that remaineth and is besieged shall die by the famine. Thus will I accomplish my fury upon them. Then shall ye know that I am the Lord. When their slain men shall be among their idols round about their altars, upon every high hill, in all the tops of the mountains, and under every green tree, and under every thick oak, the place where they did offer sweet savor to all their idols. So will I stretch out my hand upon them, and make the land desolate, yea, more desolate than the wilderness toward Diblath, in all their habitations. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 7. Moreover the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Also thou son of man, thus saith the Lord God unto the land of Israel, An end, the end is come upon the four corners of the land. Now is the end come upon thee, and I will send mine anger upon thee, and will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense upon thee all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare thee, neither will I have pity. But I will recompense thy ways upon thee, and thine abomination shall be in the midst of thee, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, An evil, and only evil, behold, is come. An end is come, the end is come. It watcheth for thee, behold, it is come. The morning is come unto thee, O thou that dwellest in the land. The time is come, the day of trouble is near, and not the sounding again of the mountain. Now will I shortly pour out my fury upon thee, and accomplish mine anger upon thee. And I will judge thee according to thy ways, and will recompense thee for all thine abominations. And mine eye shall not spare, neither will I have pity. I will recompense thee according to thy ways and thine abominations that are in the midst of thee. And ye shall know that I am the Lord that smiteth. Behold the day, behold it is come. The morning is gone forth, the rod hath blossomed, pride hath budded. Violence is risen up into a rod of wickedness. None of them shall remain, nor of their multitude, nor of any of theirs. Neither shall there be wailing for them. The time is come, the day draweth near. Let not the buyer rejoice, nor the seller mourn, for wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. For the seller shall not return to that which is sold, although they were yet alive. For the vision is touching the whole multitude thereof, which shall not return neither shall any strengthen himself in the iniquity of his life. They have blown the trumpet even to make all ready, but none goeth to the battle, for my wrath is upon all the multitude thereof. The sword is without, and the pestilence and the famine within. He that is in the field shall die with the sword, and he that is in the city, famine and pestilence shall devour him. But they that escape of them shall escape and shall be on the mountains like doves of the valleys, all of the morning, every one for his iniquity. All hands shall be feeble, and all knees shall be weak as water. They shall also gird themselves with sackcloth, and horror shall cover them, and shame shall be upon all faces, and baldness upon all their heads. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of the Lord. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. As for the beauty of his ornament, he set it in majesty, for they made the images of their abominations and of their detestable things therein. Therefore have I set it far from them. I will give it to the hands of the strangers for a prey, and to the wicked of the earth for a spoil, and they shall pollute. My face will I turn also from them, and they shall pollute my secret place. The robbers shall enter into it and defile it. Make a chain, for the land is full of bloody crimes, and the city is full of violence. Wherefore, I will bring the worst of the heathen and they shall possess their houses. I will also make the pomp of the strong to cease, and their holy places shall be defiled. Destruction cometh, and they shall seek peace, and there shall be none. Mischief shall come upon mischief, and rumor shall be upon rumor. Then shall they seek a vision of the prophet, but the law shall perish from the priest, and counsel from the ancients, 
The king shall mourn, and the prince shall be clothed with desolation, and the hands of the people of the land shall be troubled. I will do unto them after their way, and according to their deserts will I judge them. And they shall know that I am the Lord. Chapter 8. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell there upon me. Then I beheld, and lo, a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward fire, and from his loins even upward as the appearance of brightness, as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of an hand, and took me by a lock of mine head. And the Spirit lifted me up between the earth and the heaven, and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looketh toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes now the way toward the north. So I lifted up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. He said furthermore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do, even the great abominations that the house of Israel committeth here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary? But turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he brought me to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do here. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things and abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them seventy men of the ancients of the house of Israel, and in the midst of them stood Jeazaniah, the son of Shaphan, with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. And said he unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not, the Lord hath forsaken the earth. He said also unto me, Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. And he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was toward the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces toward the east, and they worshiped the sun toward the east. Then he said unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Is it a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger. And lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I not hear them. 